Live from Ray and B. Dillard Field, it is game two of the 2023 Super Regional. In game one, North Greenville with a 16 to eight win over Belmont Abbey, putting Landon Powell's Crusaders one win away from returning to the College World Series and defending its national championship. Now 48 and nine, Belmont Abbey 41 and 17 on the season. North Greenville will be the visiting team to begin this game, or for the entire game. Carter Deardorff leads it off the DH. Pat Monteith in center field bats second. Catching and hitting third, John Michael Fail. Mark Kloop in right will back cleanup. Hitting fifth at first base, David Lewis. Jalen Vasquez, the shortstop, will bat sixth. The left field hitter, Andrew Kaminsky. Bryce Roddy at second base hits eight. And Corey Bivens at third base will bat ninth on the mound. Brody Fowler, more about him in a bit. Going through his warm-ups right now, left-hander Grant Lohmeyer for the Belmont Abbey Crusaders. Lohmeyer, 8-0, a 466 earned run average. He's a senior. 63 and two-thirds innings, 62 hits, 36 runs, 33 earned. Has struck out 65, walked 34, and the opposition hitting 256 against him. He's hit 12 batters and thrown five wild pitches. And he has made two appearances against North Greenville, including a start in the conference tournament a couple of weeks back. Has a 135 earned run average, six and two thirds innings, nine hits, only two runs, one earned, six walks and eight strikeouts. So Alan Cahaley, they are dialing up a left-hander against this North Greenville lineup that put up 16 runs and 19 hits in game one. Yeah, I mean, like you just said, Lohmeyer had success against North Greenville. Now, NGU did have nine hits against him and a 321 batting average against him, but they were not able to turn those hits into runs, and he gave up just one extra base hit against NGU. He will face Carter Deardorff, Pat Monteith, and John Michael Fail to begin this one. And Super Regional number two, game number two is underway. First pitch is a strike. 7.29 p.m. I like it. We are a minute early. Carter Deardorff hitting 3.38. Takes that one down and away. A ball was one for four. Drove in a couple of runs. Walked twice in game one. Scored three times. Lefty versus left-handed batter. The 1-1 one -one pitch to him, and he fouls off a breaking ball on the inner part of the plate, one and two. Home plate umpire for this one is Danny Everett. At first base, Bobby Dunnigan. Second base, Julius Green. And Gary Keller at third. One ball and two strikes. Lohmeyer winds and delivers, and a foul ball back. I made Allen double check this when I saw it because it's not something that you expect to see, but both starting pitchers coming in with records of 8-0 and and both with earned, earned, earned run averages of 4.66. Well, that is, to have the same ERA would be a strange enough coincidence, but to have that and the same record that is, uh, when you told me that, I, I thought it was a typo automatically, too. <laughs> Ball low, two balls and two strikes. Well, since you're the one who typed it in. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to second guess you, but I just saw that, and I thought, man, that, that's got to be one heck of a coincidence. <laughs> Break even pitch. And he taps it foul at the plate. So Deardorff making low Meyer work to begin this game. This will be, a, this will be at least an eight pit pitch at bat. So a good start for Deardorff. Again, the two-two. And a check swing bouncer foul, third base side. On a pitch riding up and in. Yeah. 
One more time, the 2-2. And another foul back. This first at bat is any indication of what kind of game we're in for. Buckle up. <laughs> Break even again. And missed inside with a breaking ball. Three and two. Deardorff might have gotten a break there. But he will take it. Low Myers payoff. And it's a ground ball base hit into right field. How about that at bat by Carter Deardorff? So he's a leadoff base runner, defensively for Belmont Abbey. Ben Ferguson at first, Patrick Taylor second. Jack Boyles gets to start at short in this one. Todd Velada slides over to third. Outfield is the same. Connor Power left, Carter Duhame in center, Caleb Burr in right, Grant Browder behind the plates. Pat Monteith, all he did in game one was go five for six with a pair of home runs and five runs batted in. Leads the team in home runs with 19, 51 RBIs, a 372 batting average, which at the moment is tops. One ball, no strike to him, and that pitch outside, 2-0. Giving him a lot of room in left center field. Center fielder. Duhame shading him the other way toward the gap in right center. The 2-0. On the inside corner, a strike, 2-1. and one. Deardorff edging off the bag at first. Now the 2-1 pitch. Monteith hits it hard and off the glove of Velada at third, trickling out into shallow left. And the first two have reached. They're going to give him a base hit on that. Ball smoked to the backhand side. And the first two are on for John Michael Fail. He was three for five with two home runs and four RBIs. All he's done in his last 21 games, counting the first one today, is hit 13 home runs and drive in 42 runs. Takes a strike at the knees on the outside corner. 18 homers, 79 RBIs, 341 batting average. Chance to get North Greenville on the board here in the top of the first inning. Two on, nobody out. Lohmeyer with the pause and the 0-1 pitch. Up and in, a ball and a strike. Mark Kloop waiting on deck. Back-to-back -back hits by Deardorff and Monteith to start the inning. The 1-1 to fail, and it hit him. Breaking ball riding inside. And the bases are loaded. Another look from, I think it got him on the instep of the front foot. That's gonna get a visit from pitching coach Jeff May right out of the chute, so. A Belmont Abbey team that found itself down 10 nothing after four innings in game one, hoping for a much better start here in game two, but North Greenville has loaded the bases with nobody out here in the top of the first inning. And Jeff May trying to calm down his Senior left-hander Grant Lohmeyer, who has to face Mark Kloop. Had a pair of hits in five trips in game one, hitting 358. He's homered 13 times and driven in 48 runs. Oh, 
Also grounded into a 5-4-3 double play late in the ball game. And he lines the first pitch in the left field for a base hit. That's gonna score one. Here comes Monteith. Throw is cut off. Two runs single for Kloop. It's two nothing North Greenville. Didn't waste any time. Jumped on the first pitch. And in two previous appearances covering six and two thirds innings against North Greenville, Lohmeyer had only allowed two runs, one earned. He's given up two runs within the first four batters tonight. Hasn't retired anybody, and now he has to face David Lewis, who had a three hit, three RBI game in game one, including his 18th home run of the year. Takes it outside, ball one. Three fifty eight batter, sixty one RBIs. First and second, still nobody out. And it's down and in, two balls and no strikes. This all was until the fourth inning in game one with Alex Sniffen being knocked around pretty good that they waited to get the bullpen up with elimination looming after losing game one. You wonder how long the leash will be for Grant Lohmeyer. He is 3-0 and on David Lewis now. Three balls and no strikes. Let's see if he's swinging here. Lohmeyer with the pause and the pitch. He is not, and it's outside ball four. So the bases are loaded again. Fail to third, Kloop to second. And now Jalen Vasquez. He also homered in game one, his 10th of the year. It was two for five, hitting 344, 35 runs batted in. And the answer about how long the leash will be, not very. They are running people down to the bullpen along the right field foul line now as Vasquez takes a breaking ball high. Yeah, they're definitely in a hurry. One of the pitchers didn't even go through the gate. He jumped over the fence. North Greenville with a chance for a huge first inning. And Vasquez rams it into right field, a base hit. That'll score one. Here comes Klubian waved around to throw to the plate, and he is out by 15 feet. Hard slide into Browder, a clean slide. Browder held on, and now Kloop comes over, puts a hand on his shoulder, wants to know that he, if he's okay. And Browder, that's good sportsmanship on both sides, gives Kloop a fist bump. Fell scores to make it 3-0. Kloop is out at the plate 9-2 for the first out of the inning. Lewis comes all the way around the third on the throw, and Vasquez at first base with his 36 run batted into the season. Yeah, looking at the replay, that was a great job at the plate He uh, by Browder. Really, I don't think Kloop even touched the plate because of how well, once he had the ball, just got right in front of the plate and was able to, was able to get him with the tag. Much needed out for Belmont Abbey. And they're looking at Browder. They taped his hand up, but apparently was bleeding. You know he doesn't want to come out of the game. Oh, He's no. asking the umpire if maybe he can catch a ball or so. And Chris Anderson, the sixth year head coach, standing by and watching. I'd be interested to see if third base coach Hunter Dilworth sent Kloop there, or if that no, was no, he, he did. I was wrong. Okay, no, so he, he did. He said he was being aggressive. Yeah. Browder says he's okay, or Browder rather, excuse me. And now Andrew Kaminsky, the seventh spot in the batting order for North Greenville, the only one without a base hit in Game One. Kaminsky was 0 for 4, and Zach Zara, who came in defensively in the seventh, was 0 for 1. 
still Kaminsky hitting 328 on the year with a home run and 12 RBIs. Runners on the corners. One out now. 3-0 North Greenville. Lohmeyer ready to go to work on Kaminsky. And instead he'll throw to first and Vasquez diving back. And field looking for a double play ground ball. They turned two of them in game one. And a beautiful breaking ball started outside and came back over the heart of the plate for strike one. No balls in the strike. Low Meyer pitching and it's way outside. One and one. The action for the moment anyway has stopped in the Belmont Abbey bullpen. Lohmeyer with the 1-1 one, one coming to Kaminsky. And it's grounded toward third. They'll go to second for one in the relay in time. And that's a 5-4 double play. And the inning is over. Third one they've turned in this double header. And while it was a good inning, Lohmeyer able to keep it from being a great one. North Greenville puts three on the board. And after a half inning, it's the Crusaders three. And Belmont Abbey coming to bat. Belmont Abbey coming to bat in the bottom of the first inning, down three nothing, and they will send this lineup to the plate. Connor Powell leads it off in left field. Patrick Taylor bats second, plays second, hitting third at first base. Ben Ferguson, Garrett Browder, the cleanup hitter, is the catcher, batting fifth. The DH, Connor Tucker, Carter Duhame in center field will bat sixth. Caleb Burr, the right fielder, hits seventh. The eight hitter is third baseman Todd Villada and Jack Boyles will bat ninth and play shortstop. On the mound for North Greenville is freshman right-hander Brody Fowler, 8-0, 466 earned run average, 18th game, 10th start, 48 and a third, third innings, 47 hits, 27 runs, 25 earned, 51 strikeouts, 20 walks, and opponents hitting 249 against him. He has hit a batter and delivered five wild pitches. So let's see how he fares against this Belmont Abbey lineup in the bottom of the first inning. Connor Powell leads it off. And Fowler's first pitch to him is in there. No, a little high apparently. Ball one. Powell three for five with two RBIs in game one, hitting 341 now. Three home runs and 35 runs batted in. There's a strike on the inside corner. You can tell that the days are getting longer and the time change is in full effect. Brown ball right side, here comes a charging Roddy from the outfield, gonna have to hurry, not gonna get him. In the shift was in the outfield and the throw goes into the dugout and that will give Connor Powell access to second base. So a hit, an infield single and a throwing error on Roddy, his ninth error of the season. Gives Powell second base to begin the bottom of the first inning. So when we started doing these games way back in February, the sun was setting in left center field. And now here in late May, it's going to be dropping down behind the tree line and almost straight away right field. Patrick Taylor fouls the first pitch back 0-1. 
Second baseman hitting 277, six homers, 40 RBIs. He was 0 for 5 in the first game today. Fowler's 0-1, breaking ball. Skied out behind first, backing is Lewis. Near the line, fair territory, makes the catch. And there's one down. Ben Ferguson hit his 12th home run of the season in the first game. 55 RBIs, a 363 batting average was two for five. Left-handed batter. And Brody Fowler ready to go to work on him. First pitch, breaking ball on the inside corner, a strike. North Greenville got three runs in the top of the first inning. Belmont Abbey with a runner at second, one out in the bottom of the first. Another breaking ball, another strike from Fowler and Ferguson down in the count now, one and two. Right, no balls and two strikes. Freshman right-hander checks the runner at second and delivers. And he bounced that breaking ball up there, one and two. Cleanup hitter Garrett Browder waiting on deck. Fowler's one, two. And a breaking ball in on his fist, and he tapped it fast. Just as I was getting ready to tell you, we we're going to have to lower that shade a little bit. The sun dropped in behind a cloud. Again, the one, two. Fastball fouled away, left side. Holding it a ball and two strikes on Ben Ferguson. One out, one on, bottom of the first inning. Here's the one, two again. And it's hit hard off the glove of Lewis, covered by Roddy, who was playing out there in short right field. That'll be a base hit, and advancing to third is Connor Powell. For the moment, having Roddy out there has saved a run. They're on the corners for Garrett Browder. Browder in the first game was 0 for 3. hit by pitches twice, scored a run. North Greenville hasn't turned a double play yet today. This would be a good time for one as far as Brody Fowler is concerned. And a breaking ball hit into left field for a base hit. Just past the diving Bivens coming in from third to score is Powell and it's a 3-1 game. 60, 63rd RBI for Garrett Browder. Ferguson stops at second base with the first inning, a scoring inning for both teams, and now here's Connor Tucker. He hit a three-run home run in game one, his seventh of the year, 55 RBIs and a 333 batting average. Fowler's first pitch is fouled away. Left-handed hitter, but man, they're giving him a ton of room out in right center field. Vasquez pretty much right behind second base, the shortstop. It's one and one now as that pitch 
misses outside. Here's 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. An off-speed pitch had him out in front. For the moment, Powell's run could be unearned. I guess it's up to the official score because there have been two base hits since he reached and moved a second on a throwing error. Yeah, as a leadoff hitter, chances are Powell does score on that base hit to left field. Breaking ball hit to Lewis at first. He'll go to second for one. The return is not in time. Crowder there covering. Vasquez did a good job of picking that ball on a short hop. Firing to first, three to six on the out. Another look from the third base camera. Looks like they got the call right. So runners on the corners now with two down for Carter Duhame. And with him reaching safely, that does make it an earned run no matter what. Regardless, the old fielder's choice. Breaking ball stays a little bit high to the left-handed batter. It's a big batter early in this game for Brody Fowler. His team got three runs in the top of the first inning. Belmont Abbey's answered with one and have runners on the corners with two out. And it's a two ball, no strike count on Carter Duhame. Freshman right hander pitching. And a fly ball, deep right. Kloop to the warning track, to the wall, gone. Three-run home run for Carter Duhame, his 13th of the season. And Belmont Abbey answers with a four spot in the bottom of the first inning, and they lead it four to three. <laughs> 55 RBIs now for the Belmont Abbey center fielder. And here's Caleb Burr. And he takes a first pitch fastball for a strike. Yeah, looking at the replay, that was a good looking swing too. Looked like my swing. And MLB the show that is. That's right. <laughs> you can press buttons with your thumbs with the best of them, can't uh -huh. you? Yep. <laughs> One and one to Burr, a 295 batter. One for five in game one today. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. And it's one and two. So both pitchers getting roughed up in the first inning. One, two pitch. Bounce the breaking ball up there, two and two. Shift Roddy to the left to second base. So three defenders over there for the right-handed batter. And it's tying away three and two. Well mentioned how many how many pitches Lohmeyer pitched, but strike three called. <laughs> Inning is over. It looked like a pretty good pitch. Bird didn't like it, but it looked like it was right there. Three outs, first strikeout but a profitable inning for both teams after one. What did I say earlier, buckle up? Belmont Abbey four, North Greenville three, heading to the second.
And North Greenville trailing for the first time in this Super Regional 4-3 as we move to the top of the second inning. Bryce Roddy will lead it off, then Corey Bivens, and back to the top for Carter Deerdorf against Grant Lohmeyer. Roddy one for four in game one. Jumps away from a pitch inside. 358, two homers, 30 RBIs. Sophomore second baseman, left-handed batter. The lefty Lohmeyer pitching, and it's high and away 2-0. Low Myers 2-0. Strike 2 and 1. And he pushes a bunt third base side charging is Velada and he can't make the barehanded pickup. And that'll be a bunt single for Bryce Roddy. If a lot is able to make that barehanded pickup on the run, that's going to be an interesting play at first base, but it was do or die. And Bryce Roddy, a bunt single leading off this top of the second inning. Here's Corey Bivens. Two hits in game one and five at bats, hitting 326, and he has a cue shot off the end of the bat, foul past the first base dugout. 13 homers, 51 RBIs for the senior third baseman. Breaking ball low, one ball, one strike. Tell you what, I had to step out just for a moment to check on something real quick and what a crowd we have here today. Did not realize how many people are like, not just in the seating behind home plate, but also on both sides of the banking. It's impressive. Ground ball into the hole, backhanded by the shortstop. Throw to second for one. The relay is not in time and wide. Roddy's force boils to Taylor 6-4 for the first out. Bivens now at first with one down and back to the top of the order for Carter Deerdorf, who led off the game with a base hit and scored the first of the three runs North Greenville put up. You see the, that banking just pretty much goes all the way with people. It's, a, it's an impressive crowd out there. They might even beat the, the Mount Olive series last weekend. Deerdorf checks his swing on a breaking ball in the dirt. Good stop by Browder, ball one. Official capacity for Ray and B. Dillard Fields, 500. We might have a beat today. The 1-0. Fastball strike. Well, it's what, 300 chair back seats? Mm -hmm. Something like that? I, th I think it's, it's right around that number, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's go, Carter. One, one pitch. On the inside corner, a strike. Deerdorf thought it was too far inside. He's behind in the count one and two. Pat Monteith waiting on deck. Runner goes, and the pitch is lined down the left field line. That is a foul ball. Just a bit too much slice. And Deerdorf's bid for extra bases, wide left. So he's back in. And Lohmeyer going back to work on him with the count holding at one and two. Pitch, and it's high and away. Two and two. Come on, three. Time to 
Theodorf waiting. Here comes the break-even pitch. Nope, a throw to first base. Stepping back is Bivens. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. And it's way outside, 3-2. and two. Deardorf hit his fourth home run of the season in the second inning of game one. That was the first of seven home runs North Greenville would hit in the game. Another throw to first base. Nine total home runs hit in the game. Three balls, two strikes. Lohmeyer pitching, and strike three swing, and as Deerdorf chased a spinning breaking ball up in his eyes. Two down. That's the first strikeout for Lohmeyer. And now here's Pat Monteith, who singled in the first inning and scored. Six hits and seven at-bats so far in the two games today. And he shoots this one into the gap in left center field. Over to cut it off is Duhame. Bobbles it a bit, but recovers. And holding up at third is Bivens. Another base. For Monteith. And with runners on the corners and two down, John Michael Fell will get a shot here in the inning. He was hit by a pitch and scored a run in the first. Garrett Browder stepping out in front and flashing signs to the infield, telling them what he's going to do if Monteith runs from first. And Lohmeyer's first pitch to fail is a swing and a miss. Fail wanted the lead back right there. Monteith does lead, or excuse me, he is now second on the team in stolen bases, 17 coming in. And Mark Kloop, who's on deck, is a perfect 20 for 20. The 0-1. Well, he had a pitch to hit there, and he popped it down the right field line. Anybody going to get there? Yes, the right fielder, Caleb Burr, coming a long way and in fair territory, able to reel it in. And the two-out rally goes by the boards. Good job by Lohmeyer. They strand two, go to the bottom of the second. 4-3, Belmont Abbey.
Bottom of the second inning, eight, nine, and one for Belmont Abbey. Todd Velada will lead it off, then Jack Boyles and Connor Powell against Brody Fowler. After his team scored three in the top of the first inning, Fowler gave up four in the bottom of the first. So, like Lohmeyer in the top of the inning, looking for better things his second time out there. And his first pitch to Velada is a breaking ball strike on the outside corner. He was one for two and walked twice in game one. Hitting 351, three homers, 26 RBIs. He was at shortstop in the first game, slides over to third in this one. Fowler misses down and away. One and one. Big breaking ball. Drops in for a strike. It's one and two. Right-hander brings it. Tried to get him to chase an off-speed pitch away, and Velada wouldn't bite. Two-two pitch. Outside. Three and two the count. Payoff, a breaking ball in the air. Right center field, Monteith, the center fielder moving over. He's got it, and there's one down. Now Jack Boyles, freshman shortstop, didn't play in the first game, hitting 233 on the season for the home run and 12 RBIs. He started... 22 games previously. And the right-handed batter takes a breaking ball outside, ball one. That breaking ball got the inside corner, a ball and a strike. Leadoff hitter Connor Powell waiting on deck. Fastball high, two balls and a strike. And now three and ones, he misses low. One pitch has popped up foul behind the plate, and it'll get back over our head. And rolls right back down the screen and drops on a bounce into the hands of the on-deck hitter, Connor Powell. 3-2 pitch. And that ball is launched back into left field. Ballpark's not going to hold that one over the scoreboard, gone. Jack Boyle's second home run of the season. It's 5-3, Belmont Abbey. Kaminsky got back and just flat ran out of room. and That ball cleared the scoreboard. Second home run that Fowler's given up in as many innings. Now Connor Powell, who started the first inning off with an infield single, moved to second on a throwing error and scored the first run of the game for Belmont Abbey. Takes a breaking ball strike. I think Jack Boyles has some family right under us because they were going insane when he hit that home run. <laughs> Pitch misses inside. One ball and one strike. It's like there's some stirring around out in the bullpen in left field. Breaking ball misses upstairs, two and one. Doesn't look like anybody's throwing yet, but there is some armband work going on. 
Two one. And there for a strike. Two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch. Down and in, ball three. So he has gone to a full count on each of the first three hitters in this inning. He got Velada to fly out to center. Boyles homer to left. And now the payoff pitch to Connor Powell is grounded back through the middle into center field for a base hit. Fowler tried to kick save, couldn't get it. Powell is two for two, and here's Patrick Taylor who popped out to the first baseman Lewis his first time up. Shows bunt, pulls the bat back, and it costs him a strike. The 0 1. Chopped towards the charging Vasquez. Nope, cut off by the third baseman Bibbins. Throw to second for one, and the return double play. 5 4 3. I think they're going to challenge this one at least. Yep, Chris Anderson wants to challenge the call. So hold on. It's close. It, I don't know. He might have beat it there. Got a great angle of it. So, I mean, it should definitely be on. Uh, should be plenty of video evidence for it. Didn't have a challenge in game one. Connor Powell's going to be out regardless. for the second out, but they're gonna go underneath and take a look. And you know what, with that frame by frame look right there, it looked like the foot might have been on the bag right before the ball got to the glove. If they see that look, they may overturn that call and Taylor will be safe at first on a fielder's choice. Ball was not hit particularly hard. Crusader infield did a good job to make it that close. Bivens, the third baseman, ranging far to his left, cutting it in front of Vasquez, getting to force at second in a quick turn by Roddy, but and they're just waiting on the umpires. Just looking at the hour by hour forecast for tomorrow. You get to about noon, doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's anything close to that radar that you were showing me earlier, then uh, yeah, it is not promising. College baseball all over this region going to be dealing with that. Oh, yeah. Here come the two umpires who went under the tunnel. And the call, he's safe. And I think they got it right. Yep. So 5-4 on the force of Powell for the second out. Taylor safe at first on the holder's choice, and that'll keep the inning alive for Ben Ferguson. So let's see. And here's another look from the first base camera. And there you can see the foot on the bag and the ball has not yet gotten to the glove. Yep. Let's see if Belmont Abbey can capitalize on that. Fowler, first pitch swinging, rips it foul, first base side. 0 and 1. Swing and a foul tip held on to by Phil and Brody Fowler ahead. No balls and two strikes.
The 0 2. Strike three swinging. Fastball down. Ferguson down on strikes. Inning is over. Second strikeout for Brody Fowler. They get a run on the Boyles home run. Two hits, no errors, one left after two complete. 5 3, Belmont Abbey. Top of the third inning, middle third of the batting order for North Greenville now trailing it five to three. Mark Kloop will lead it off, then David Lewis and Jalen Vasquez. Kloop a two run single in the first inning. Later was thrown out at the plate trying to score on a hit by Vasquez. Lohmeyer's first pitch is outside a ball. Lohmeyer's Ability to rein that inning in and keep it at three runs. And it's still very early, just top of the third, but could end up being big in this game because it was three nothing, or excuse me, it was two nothing. Bases loaded, nobody out. Vasquez got the base hit to score fail. Kloop was thrown out at the plate. Then Lewis walked. You've got the bases loaded again with one out. And Andrew Kaminsky bounced into a 5-4-3 double play. Two and one on Kloop. Lohmeyer pitching. And the breaking ball comes in the back door, gets the outside corner. Two and two. Did you get it all straightened away there? Yep. Break even pitch. And a breaking ball hit in the air. Right center field. Right fielder Burr waiting. He has it. One down. David Lewis walked his first time up. If North Greenville wins this game, the Super Regionals are over. Landon Powell's team advances to the College World Series for the second straight year. If Belmont Abbey wins, we try to play a third game tomorrow. Try. Swing and a miss. Lewis way out in front of a changeup. And just we mentioned it at the uh, start of the earlier broadcast, but all nine innings have to be played. There's no official game, and then it, the rest of it gets called off. All nine innings have to be played. Foul out of play, 0-2. Pitching and a foul back. Just got a note from our good friend, the former mayor of Due West, Ralph Patterson. Belmont Abbey's Chris Anderson. We talked about him being in his sixth season and what a fine year they've had here. He's been to the D2 College World Series three different times. Once at Belmont Abbey when he was an assistant to Kermit Smith and twice 
at Lander with Smith, and Smith's now the head coach at App State, which just beat Troy or, and are in the Sun Belt semifinals. And Ralph Patterson, people who think all he knows is basketball, they're sadly mistaken. One and two. Count holding as Lewis fouling it off to stay alive. Lohmeyer pitching again. It's way outside. Two balls and two strikes. And Chris Anderson was the coach of Belmont Abbey when they came here for the Conference Carolinas tournament back in 2018, as well as the regional in 2017. Oh, Ooh, two two pitches down and in. And it gets Lewis. And he will trot on down to first base. Seventh time he's been hit by a pitch this year. Now Jalen Vasquez. RBI single in the first inning. 36 runs batted in now. First pitch to him is inside and a backhand stab by Garrett Browder. That's already 58 pitches for Lohmeyer. Threw a ton in the first inning. Breaking ball strike on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. And another breaking ball, another strike, and Vasquez behind one and two. 5-3, Belmont Abbey on top. Game two of this Super Regional. Top half of the third inning. One on one out for North Greenville. Low Myers, one, two, and the fastball misses away. Evens up at two and two. Lewis, a short lead at first base, 2-2 two -two pitch. Vasquez checks his swing, did he go? He did not, says third base umpire Gary Keller, three and two. So let's see now with one out and a full count if Lewis would be running, another look. About as borderline as you yeah, get. Doesn't get much closer than no. that. Payoff, he's not going and Vasquez Shoots it foul off the upper part of the third base dugout. Yeah, and I stand corrected. It was the 2019 season where the Conference Carolinas tournament was played here in Tigerville. 3 2 again. And Vasquez pops it out into shallow left field, moving towards the gap and coming in as Powell. And they're two down. Been, been here long enough, all these years are starting to blend in now. Well, welcome to my world. <laughs> 12 years over at Furman and it's just all one purple blur. Oh yeah. <laughs> Andrew Kaminsky grounded into that 5-4-3 double play that ended the first inning. Will Myers first pitch to him is a two hopper to short. They will underhand Boyles will to Taylor at second to force Lewis, and the inning is over. 6-4 on the out. And Lohmeyer with back-to-back -back scoreless innings. Bottom of the third coming up. Belmont Abbey on top, 5-3.
Well, we are in hold everything mode here because there is a challenge going on on the out at second base. It looked routine, maybe a little too routine. <laughs> but Landon Powell immediately jumped out of the third base dugout and said he wanted to challenge the play at second base. Yeah, David Lewis is still is still standing out there at second base, so he certainly thinks he's safe. Well, when the challenge ha happens, you know, they Belmont Abbey was already off the field. The umpires pulled him back out, mm -hmm. so everybody has to stay put. Right. And we're just waiting to see if there's a shot that we can see of what might have happened. The only thing I can think of is that the second baseman, Taylor, either missed second base or came off the bag early. Yeah in the opinion of Landon Powell. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to see anything while the review is happening because our producer, Will Cahaley, is talking with and showing the umpires the different angles. So we'll have to wait until after the review. But yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of a strange one. Just thought it was routine, but maybe not. Garrett Browder had taken his chest protector and mask off. And he puts it back on so Lohmeyer can throw a few pitches. That's the only angle, and they're gonna say out. So the call stands. Or is confirmed, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Now officially middle of the third, 5-3, Belmont Abbey. Bottom third. Belmont Abbey coming to bat with the middle third of their batting order. Browder, Tucker, and Duhame against Brody Fowler. He's given up five runs, four in the first, including a three-run homer to Duhame, and then a solo shot to Jack Boyles in the second. Browder had a RBI single his first time up and first pitch swinging he hits very long but very foul down the left field line just like one just did get confirmation that the official ruling was that there wasn't enough video evidence there so call stands yes that breaking ball hangs up there and Browder hits it a ton back into left but Kaminsky a step away from the wall able to get back and reel it in Man, Brody Fowler got away with one there. One down. Now Connor Tucker reached on a fielder's choice. Yeah, taking another look at the play. I mean, you just can't tell. Uh, they look looked like it was touching the bag. If uh, looking from the third base camera, so. That's the angle that would have raised the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. One ball, no strikes. Lined into right. Kloop started in, now has to go back into his right. Makes a play, two down. Two hard hit balls, but two outs. And now Carter Duhame, who hit the three run home run in the bottom of the first inning, that turned a 3 1 deficit for Belmont Abbey into a 4 3 lead. It's now 5 3.
Fowler trying for a 1-2-3 inning. And a breaking ball misses ball one. Allen, our Greenville Drive, are now leading nothing in the seventh inning in Rome. Foul back, trying for their fourth win in the first five games in that series after beating Bowling Green five out of six yeah, they've, at they've, Floor Field. They've been on the tear lately. So really rough <laughs> start to the season for them, but, man, they're turning things around. 1-1 one, one pitch to Duhame. Big breaking ball drops in for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. Into the big-time shift for the left-handed batter, the 1-2 pitch. Strike three swing and fast ball up and away. Duhame chased it, and a 1-2-3 inning for Brody Fowler. That's what he needed. His third strikeout. Three innings in the books, 5-3. Belmont Abbey on top. Inning totals for Belmont Abbey. Five runs, six hits, no errors. North Greenville, three runs, six hits, and one error. Eight, nine, and one for North Greenville. Bryce Roddy, Corey Bivens, and Carter Deerdorf against Grant Lohmeyer after the three-run first. Has pitched shutout baseball the next two. First pitch, Roddy grounds it to his opposite number, Patrick Taylor at second base, who throws him out. Field to get a step off to his left, one out. That's 67 pitches now. Or 66, excuse me. You know North Greenville wants to get Lohmeyer out of there as quick as they can and get into the Belmont Abbey bullpen. Corey Bibbins takes a strike on the outside corner. ball low and now that the sun's gone down we can <laughs> lift it up one and one Lohmeyer pitches and a squibber off the end of the bat to first Ferguson will take it himself Bivens is retired two down Now back to the top for Carter Deerdorf, who has singled and scored and struck out swinging and two times up. Lohmeyer is one of those guys, and you can see it here, especially in second, third, and here in this fourth inning. throwing the occasional fastball like he did there, but throwing a lot of breaking balls and change-ups and keeping this big, free-swinging North Greenville team off balance. High chopper to the first baseman. That's a fair ball deep behind the bag. Underhands, not in time. Deerdorf running hard, beat it out. Got a step inside of the pitcher and left. Exact infield single and keeps the inning alive for Pat Monte. Look at that camera work. <laughs> Literally by a toe. Yeah, that's 
It's obviously fantastic hustle by Carter Deerdorf. I mean, that looked like a routine play off the bat, but did a great job of getting down the line. Now Pat Monteith, two for two in this game, seven for eight on the day, and a pitch in the dirt rolling away from Browder, and that will allow Deerdorf to move to second base. Wild pitch. In the first game today, seven of North Greenville's first 10 runs scored after two men were retired and nobody was on base. Pat Monteith with a base hit now could deliver such a run for the Crusaders. And that breaking ball gets through the wickets and moving up to third is Deardorf, another wild pitch. And it's two balls and no strikes. Now Browder's gonna walk out and talk to his left-hander. We have another we have another look at the uh, at the pitch from the showing the catcher. Almost thought that might have been a pass ball. It might have gotten into the turf, but not but sure if we have it or not. Initially I kind of thought the same thing. And not going to be able to tell yeah. from here. Yeah, that was close enough to the turf, it looked like. But I will say this. That's a ball that's got to be blocked. Yeah. All right, 2-0 and o to Monteith. Pitch. And just below the knees, ball three. John Michael fell on deck. Here we go. Yep, that's a wild pitch. Oh, no, never that, mind. That's that no, that was okay. The that was the before. pitch before. Okay, that was the first <laughs> wild pitch. Strike one called on the inside corner. Will quit trying to cater to Allen. <laughs> Three one, and it's high ball four. No, look, one more time. Yeah, that's a wild pitch. John Michael Fell was up in a similar situation in the second inning. Two on with two out, and he flied to shallow right along the line to Caleb Burr. Runners on the corners with two outs here. Hit by a pitch and scored a run in the first inning. Lohmeyer's first pitch to him is a breaking ball strike. Outfield deep, center fielder Duhame shading him a bit towards left. The 0-1 had a fly ball, center field, backing on into Duhame, warning track, wall, go! John Michael Fowles strikes again, a three-run shot out the front door. And North Greenville has flipped it here in the top of the fourth inning. They lead it 6-5. What a tear this kid is on. And now, Counting this one, 23 games, 14 home runs, and 45 runs batted in. In 23 games. Ball, Mar so I was going to say, ball just explodes off the bat. Mark Kloop takes it outside a ball. He had a two-run single in the first inning, fly to right, leading off the third. So again, two outs, nobody on. And it's all set up by the hustle of Carter Deerdorf on the infield single on the big bounding ball deep at first base. So you get another look at John Michael Fell's swing. No wind to speak of currently. That no. ball just traveled. Check swing foul. But Deerdorf not giving up on that Hopper down the first baseline, running hard. And you saw the replay. His right toe got to the bag a fraction of a second before the right foot 
of the pitcher Lohmeyer. A walk to Monteith, and then John Michael fell to straightaway center field. One and two on Kloop. Got a right-hander starting to throw in the Belmont Abbey bullpen. One-two pitch, strike three, swing, and a foul tip held on to by Browder. For Lohmeyer, that's his second strikeout. But from his standpoint, it comes one batter too late. John Michael Fells' three-run home run is given North Greenville a 6-5 lead as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning. Bottom third of the order for Belmont Abbey as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning. Burr, Velada, and Boyles. And Caleb Burr takes a first pitch strike. Brody Fowler had a 1-2-3 inning in the third. And a breaking ball foul. Uh, off to the right, it's 0-2. Burr struck out looking his first time up. O2 pitch. Chopped up the middle and passed a diving Vasquez into left center for a base shading toward the hole and couldn't get there. So Burr a leadoff base hit. That's their eighth hit of the game. And here is Velada, who flied to center his first time up. Squares to Bunt, and Bunt's at foul. Left side of the plate. Six five North Greenville here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Belmont Abbey with a runner at first, nobody out. The 0-1 popped out into shallow center out behind second base. In fact, Vasquez, the shortstop, gets back to make the play. And there's one out. Now Jack Boyles, a freshman shortstop who homered his first at bat. Takes a fastball up and in, ball one. <laughs> Got an email from Laura who says, the cowbell is too much. Please use your sway to have the cowbell removed from the game. I can't take it anymore. Laura, if I had that much power, I would be doing something other than what I'm doing right now. Ball off the mitt of John Michael Fail and rolling far enough away for Caleb Burr to advance. So 
So the wild pitch moves him up. Three balls and no strikes on Boyles. The leadoff hitter, Connor Powell, waiting on deck. And there's a fastball strike, three and one. You know what's interesting is I, I believe that the NCAA still has a rule on the books against artificial noisemakers, and I don't care where you go, it's never enforced. Yeah, so it was limited. She was kind of restricted from using it. Three and two. If that makes any sense. She, she doesn't use it during the actual play, if that makes any sense. So there was kind of an agreement. That's Leslie, the librarian here at North Greenville. <laughs> She's <laughs> been here a very, very long time with that cowbell. Here comes the payoff pitch. And strike three called. And Boyles knew, uh, Boyles knew it, two down. But you know, Mississippi State is famous for the cowbell. Yes, yes. And this is going back long time ago, early part of the 2000s, they came into Clemson for a regional one year and wouldn't you know it, Clemson enforced yeah. the no <laughs> artificial noisemakers, so all the cowbells had to be left in the parking lot. <laughs> the Mississippi State fans took their keys out of their park a pocket and rattled them. Oh, wow. The entire game. <laughs> they were not going to be denied the opportunity to make noise. I tell you what, they they do have, it's gotten to the point to where it really is kind of a system for them because I we were kind of talking about it. I was in the marching band at South Carolina for three years. And in 2011, we did go down to Mississippi State. And they really did do a great job of, they would ring it in between plays, but then they would not, as that's a ball, uh, but they would not play, they would not ring it during the plays because there was an agreement between them and the SEC that if they did ring it during the plays, it would be flat out, um, it would be flat out banned. And so they did a good job of kind of having it just in between plays. Fly ball back into center. Monteith gets back. He's got it. Powell retired, inning over. So the leadoff hit, and that's all. They strand the runner at second. And after four complete, North Greenville six, Belmont Abbey five. David Lewis leads for North Greenville in the top half of inning number five. Dan Scott, Alan Cahaley with you. Super Regional game two. North Greenville won the first game today, 16 to eight. They advance to their second straight College World Series. David Lewis wraps it on the ground. A couple of hops to Boyles to shortstop and he throws him out. One pitch, one down. If Belmont Abbey wins, not only do they force a winner to take all third game that they'll try to get in in its entirety tomorrow, but it would be a program record 42nd win of the season. The 41 wins match 
what they did back in 2008. Jalen Vasquez, RBI single, fly ball to the left and two times up. He takes a breaking ball from Lohmeyer, down and away, ball one. I think if you're Belmont Abbey, you kind of wonder what could have been because their non-conference schedule was not easy by any means. It was considered one of the, I mean, they have one of the toughest, uh, the highest RPIs in the country. Strike call, one and one. And so it wasn't like they were just scheduling a bunch of easy competition to play. They played some very tough opponents in non-conference play. 1-1 one, one pitch to Vasquez, and it almost hit him. And just enough break when he turned away from it that it missed his front shoulder. 2-1. and one. Lefty brings it playward, and it's high, ball three. Three and one. That's 88 pitches for Lohmeyer. And again, for Chris Anderson, how far can he go? before you have to get into that bullpen. Vasquez, a fly ball to the left. Backing a bit is Powell, waiting on it, and there are two down. And, and you can get in trouble when you play the game of statistics, just cold, hard stats on the paper. But looking at the cold, hard stats, Belmont Abbey, their chances of winning a bullpen versus bullpen matchup in a tight game late is not good. But that's why you play the game between the white lines and not on paper. Andrew Kaminsky takes ball one, and he flies this one to right, pretty much right at Caleb Burr, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Lohmeyer. This is back nicely. Three up and three down. Halfway through the second game of this 2023 Super Regional. North Greenville on top, six to five. Belmont Abbey coming to bat here, bottom of the fifth inning with two, three, and four. Taylor Ferguson and Browder against Brady Fowler, or Brody Fowler, excuse me. Patrick Taylor 0 for 2. And he lays off a breaking ball, and first base umpire Bobby Dunnigan says he did not go. Ball one. Chopped by the mound. Here's a charging right. Roddy, who was shading him up the middle, and the second man throws him out. Almost took too much time getting rid of that ball. One down. Looks like there's a right-hander starting to throw in the Belmont Abbey bullpen. Or maybe not. Maybe he was just kind of goofing around. There's a couple of guys down there wrestling. <laughs> Ferguson takes the first pitch in the dirt of ball. Sure, that's what a coach loves to, to look over and see. Well, yeah, I mean, at least they're loose, right? Yeah. The nation game. 
Ferguson has singled and scored and struck out swinging and two times up. Big breaking ball misses inside. Two balls and no strikes. 75th pitch for Brody Fowler coming. That's ball three low. Six, eight, and one for North Greenville. Five, seven, and zero oh for Belmont Abbey. There's a strike, three and one. Right-hander brings it, and it's hit hard. Knocked down by Lewis and skips off his glove out into short right field. Roddy picked it up and threw to the pitcher covering, but not in time. I tell you, Lewis almost made a sensational play on a rocket off the bat of Ben Ferguson. And now Garrett Browder, RBI single on a fly ball to the left. Look at that. Just about picked it. And then it's a good thing that Ferguson was running because watch Roddy. First pitch is low, ball one. Brody Fowler, the freshman. Pitching into the fifth inning here. Strike called on the inside corner of breaking ball. And now definitely there is a right-hander throwing in the Belmont Abbey bullpen. Or he just threw a pitch and now he's standing there watching. The 1-1. One -one. Outside with the fastball. Two balls and a strike. One on, one out, 2-1 two, pitch. Lined into left field, that will get down for a base hit. Stopping at second is Ferguson, so the tying run now in scoring position for Connor Tucker. Fielder's choice, run scored in the first. Lined out to Kloop in right in the third. So Fowler with his feet to the fire here and a swing and a miss by Tucker. North Greenville's not turned a double play in either game today. They've hit into three. The 0-1. Round into right field for a base hit towards the gap. That's gonna score a run. Monteith cuts it off, throw comes into second base, and did they get him? They did. Head first slide, Monteith's throw, and a nice pick by Vasquez. Gets the out at second. Ferguson scores to tie the game at six, and around the third goes Garrett Browder. That's close, I don't know. They want to. Yep, they're going to. Chris they're Anderson wants to to challenge it. So Tucker will get credit for a base hit. Monteith did a nice job of going into a skid and keeping that ball from getting through and going all the way to the wall and then fired a strike to second. And Vasquez is able to field it on the short hop and get the tag down. Now the four umpires talking about it, and they are going to go review it. Now just a quick reminder, Belmont Abbey still has both of their challenges because of the fact that they won their first one. North Greenville has one remaining. It's a shot we would really need to see from the center field camera, I think, if you had an angle from there. The home plate angle doesn't show you anything. And of course, once they're down underneath looking at it, we can't see anything here right. until they're done. Yeah, 
Not sure if the uh, third base angle might have gotten it. He might have been focused on the runner scoring at home. So it's one of those things, you know, that you've got different runners on base and, you know, cameras are focused on certain areas. And so well, and it's not and always a guarantee. And to overturn it, you have to have clear video right. evidence. Right. So we'll see what happens. And, and what's at stake here, if the call stands, it's a runner at third and two down. If it's overturned, it's second and third and one down. So Fowler will stay loose by leisurely tossing to John Michael Fell behind the plate. Our third review in this game yeah, after not having any in game one. Yep. Still a tie game no matter what here. Yeah, it doesn't affect the run that scored. What it affects is how many outs and how many runners on base. But the hit by Connor Tucker makes it 6-6. Six, six. That's a fact. Ferguson, or a Browder rather, moving to third. That's a fact. That won't change. Yeah, this one is definitely taking longer than the last one, so I'm thinking there might be a second angle that they're looking at. Eight to six on the out for the second out of the inning. So after review, it stands. And now Carter du Duhame will bat. Yeah, it looks like he wasn't, there was a point there where he wasn't touching the bag and I think that's where the tag was made. Breaking ball misses low. So we're tied at six. Go ahead run 90 feet away here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Fowler misses up and outside. Two balls and no strikes. They're into the full-fledged shift for him with Vasquez to the right at second, Roddy out in right field. 2-0. Swing and he pops it fouling out of here, third base side. Two and one. So both teams with one challenge remaining now. If a team does run out of challenges after the seventh inning, it is a the crew chief's discretion whether a play is reviewed or not. Breaking ball line foul down the right field side. It's two and two. Now that doesn't mean that a team can't try to persuade right. the crew chief into reviewing the play. It's just not guaranteed. I mean, no manager would ever try to persuade no, an umpire, no, would he? No, no way, no, no way. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes on Carter Duhame. Brody Fowler with the pause and the break-even pitch, and it's high and away, ball three. Wonder if this is his last batter regardless of the outcome. Three balls, two strikes, tying run at third, two down, or the go-ahead run at third, two down. Payoff pitch, and a line drive, caught in foul territory by the first baseman, Lewis. Inning is over. Goes into a skid, would not have been a base hit, but it would have allowed Duhame to see another pitch. Fine play by Lewis, they get a run on three hits, no errors, one left, and after five complete, we are tied at six apiece.
time we go to the sixth inning, Bryce Roddy leading it off. Roddy Bibbins and Deerdorf. and a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. And Roddy behind, no balls and two strikes. Lefty's 0-2 pitch, strike three swing and waved at a breaking ball off the plate outside. One down, third strikeout and now five in a row retired by Grant Lohmeyer. Here's Corey Bivens, 0 for two. Fielder's choice ground ball, and he bounced out to the first baseman, Ferguson, unassisted. <clears throat> Right-handed batter takes a strike on the outside corner. Wind in the 0-1. Shows bunt, pulls the bat back, and the breaking ball got the outside corner. It's no balls and two strikes. He set him down in order in the fifth, did Lohmeyer. His 0-2 to Bivens. Shot foul on the hillside above the first base dugout. Relax at your own risk up there. <laughs> Holding it 0-2, and, and it's high. One ball, two strikes. Well, you said to buckle up for this game, and so far it is not disappointed. Low Meyer pitching, and a foul ball. Big hop into the third base dugout by Bivens. Carter Deardorff, the leadoff hitter on deck. Low Meyer about to to hit 100 pitches for the night. The one, two. High fastball, and it's popped up foul. Third baseman Velada behind the coach's box makes the play, and they're two down. And this is the precise scenario that started the three-run fourth inning. Roddy and Bivens were retired. Deerdorf hustled out an infield hit. Monteith drew a walk, and then John Michael Fell hit the three-run home run. First pitch to Deerdorf is grounded to first again. This time there will not be a foot race as Ferguson takes it himself. Second straight inning, the Crusaders of North Greenville have gone in order. Seven in a row retired by Lohmeyer. Middle of the sixth. We're all tied at six.
Jordy Fowler back out there to begin the sixth inning. Bottom third of the batting order due up for Belmont Abbey, and Caleb Bird takes a strike on the first pitch. Burr has struck out, looking, and singled in two times up, and he pops this one up on the infield. Left side, Vasquez, the shortstop, calls off Bivens, and there's one away. Don Villano, 0 for 2. Fly ball to center, pop up to short. One ball, no strikes to him. And that fastball misses away, 2-0. This is where an umpire is truly tested. You've got a lot of fans from both schools. A tie ball game getting laid into it. He's going to be hearing from a lot of from, uh, from the crowd a lot for the rest of this game. That's popped up foul. Fail giving it a look, but it's out of play. Well, I can tell you. Oh. Fan must have blown a catch. Uh, there, there are a bunch of kids going after the ball, but they just about smashed into the back of the dugout. <laughs> Danny Everett has been calling college baseball well, as long as I've been doing it, I'm in my 19th year. Check swing roller left side. Here comes Vasquez, going to have to hurry, running throw, and a nice pick by Lewis at first base on the short hop. That's a great play on both ends, two down. I'm not saying that Danny Everett or any umpire will get every single call right, but I am telling you he is not going to be affected by what is said back here. And I can't believe I just said I'm in my 19th year as a Division I broadcaster, you know, college broadcaster. Breaking ball strike to Jack Boyle, solo homer, and a strikeout looking at two times up. And a fly ball to right. Kloop backing, now coming in a few steps, and Brody Fowler turns in a 1-2-3 bottom of the sixth inning. Nice bounce back inning for him. Six innings in the books. And we are tied at six here in Tigerville. Six inning totals, North Greenville, six runs, eight hits, one error, and they have stranded five. And for Belmont Abbey, six runs, ten hits, no errors. They have left three. We go to the seventh, two, three, and four. Monty, Thale, and Kloop against Grant Lohmeyer who enters this inning having thrown 101 pitches through six. Monteith, two for two with a walk. He has scored two runs, and he leans away from a pitch inside, ball one. Five for six in the first game today. He has been on eight times in nine total plate appearances between the two games. The 1-0, strike one at the knees. And here we go. Oh, 
They give him a lot of room out in left center field. The 1-1 pitch, fouled out of play right side. Lohmeyer has retired seven in a row. So made a good catch down the uh, down the right field line in the bank, the banking up there. Not nearly the reaction on that catch as the kids who almost went head first into the dugout on the last foul ball, right? One, two pitch, way outside. Two balls and two strikes. Break even pitch, grounded slowly towards short up and throws and Monteith is retired and that in and of itself is news. One down. Now John Michael fell. Three run homer his last time up. Last 22 games, 14 home runs. And 45 RBIs up to the minute. First pitch to him, and it's on the inside corner, a strike. A one chop towards a third baseman, Velada, who was playing deep. He gets and throws and fails, retired, two outs. And that's nine in a row now that Lohmeyer has set down. Mark Kloop, two run single to first, fly ball to right in the third, strikeout swinging in the fourth. Two outs, nobody on. And Kloop takes a strike. Pitch number 110 coming up next for Lohmeyer. Still, as you're looking out there, nobody. Yeah. Nobody in any hurry to warm up. Pitch misses outside. Browder tried to bring it back in. One and one. Two outs, nobody on. 6-6 six, six game, top of the seventh. Kloop takes it outside again, two and one. pulled to the far end of the third base dugout, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Break even pitch. And a ground ball, base hit into right field. Luke hit it hard the other way. That snaps the string of nine in a row, retired by Lohmeyer, and we'll bring David Lewis to the plate. Over one officially, he's walked and been hit by a pitch. Last time up, first pitch swinging, he grounded out to short. He homered in the first game today. And Lohmeyer. The long hold, the first pitch, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. And yeah, put that streak ending, action in the bullpen now. Kloop a threat to steal, he's 20 for 20 on the season. And that pitch is down and in. One ball and one strike. Lewis with 18 home runs, 61 runs batted in. Lohmeyer's 1-1 to him. It's lined in the left field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Kloop going to try to turn it on and come to third to throw, and he's in there as the ball took a big hop over Velada. And here they come with two outs again. Now Jalen Vasquez will bat. 
Had an RBI single his first time up. Since then, he's flied to left twice. And another look. Kloop never hesitated coming around second base. So Vasquez in a lefty-lefty matchup, a chance to give his team the lead back if he can get a hit with two outs. Lohmeyer's first pitch to him is popped up. Out into shallow left, here comes Powell, and the inning is over. So the two out rally goes by the board. Seventh inning stretch time here in Tigerville. 6-6 six, six the score. Back in a moment. Bottom of the seventh, and we've got a pitching change for North Greenville. Left-hander Michael Rodriguez, the red shirt junior, 6'6", 245 from Odessa, Florida, coming on to pitch. And he has had a sensational season. This is 22nd appearance all out of the bullpen. 4-0, a 182 earned run average, five saves. 34 and two-thirds innings, 23 hits, nine runs, seven earned. And check this out, 62 strikeouts, five walks. Opposition hitting 181 against him, and he's also hit six batters. Yeah, throughout the season, every time I bring up that walk to strikeout ratio, I'm just amazed every single time. I have to kind of pause and make sure I'm reading it correctly because it's that impressive. Rodriguez will get the top of the order. Powell, Taylor, and Ferguson. And then Browder and Tucker behind him. So four of the next five hitters, all left-handed batters, and there's a strike to Powell, who's two for three with a run scored. Brody Fowler, six innings, 10 hits, six runs earned, no walks, four strikeouts, 98 pitches, 64 strikes. Pitches down and away, one and one. Left-handed batter stands right on top of the plate, swing and a miss. One and two. Rodriguez works from the stretch full time. And a ground ball by the mound. There's Vasquez near the bag at second. Throws, and he got him. And there's one out. Now Patrick Taylor, who's 0 for 3 in the game, and 0 for 8 in the Super Regional. Action, yeah, there's a right-hander throwing down in their bullpen, so 
be interesting to see if Lohmeyer comes back out for the top of the eighth inning. Swing and a miss. Yeah, we were able to figure out it was, it's number 22, Drew Stagora, warming up for Belmont Abbey in the bullpen. Breaking ball, strike two, ball. And he is their ace out of the bullpen. 6-0, 363 earned run average, 29 appearances, all in relief. Strike three, swinging. Taylor is gone, two down. First strike out for Rodriguez. And he has four, Stagura does, of their 11 saves. So Lohmeyer did, if he is done, exactly what Chris Anderson needed him to do, go deep into the game and shorten it up, hoping that maybe Stagura can finish it off. The score's tied at 6-6. Strike one to Ben Ferguson, two for three in this game with a pair of runs scored. He's also struck out once. The 0-1, swing and a miss again, and it's 0-2. Rodriguez comes with that funky arm angle. It's kind of between sidearm and three quarters. It can be tough for a left-hander to stay in there. 0-2 pitch, fastball away. One and two, should he reach? Garrett Browder would be next. One two pitch. Way outside two and two. Bottom of the seventh inning. Two out, nobody on for Belmont Abbey. We're tied at six. Game two of the 2023 Division II Southeast Super Regional. North Greenville won the first game. 16 to 8. Two two pitch. Outside ball three. So he's ahead 0-2. And Ferguson showing good patience, has worked the count full. Rodriguez will take a walk behind the mound. Believe it or not, opponents, lefties are hitting better against Rodriguez than righties. 192 average versus lefties, 178 average versus righties. Here comes the payoff pitch. And he just got a piece to stay alive. Well, neither average much to write home about. But right, right. One more time, the 3-2 pitch. Here it is. Strike three call. Breaking ball that started at Ferguson and cut right back over the plate. Three up and three down, pair of strikeouts. We are through seven. Still tied at six.
Well, Grant Lohmeyer going back out to begin the eighth inning, and with Andrew Kaminsky due up, he'll be taken down, and Zach Zara will come on to pinch hit. Came on defensively in game one, went 0 for 1. Top of the eighth inning, 6-6 game, and Zara takes it down and away a ball. That was the 118th pitch thrown by Grant Lohmeyer. Zara, Roddy, and Bivens. And Zara takes a strike. North Greenville has scored in two innings in this game off of Lohmeyer. Three in the first, three in the fourth, and that's it. Tied at six. High and away, two and one. Left-hander brings it, and a breaking ball drops in there for a strike, two and two. It gives Zara a lot of room in right center field. Low Myers break-even pitch, strike three swinging. Like an off-speed breaking ball down and in, and Zara spinning on it. One down. That is the fourth strikeout for Lohmeyer. And now Bryce Roddy, bunt single in the second, sits in a ground ball to second and a strikeout swinging. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. 0-1. Strike two, same spot, and he's behind no balls and two strikes. Bottom of the eighth inning, they have four, five, and six due up. Browder, Tucker, and Duhame. 0-2 pitch, and he stays alive with a foul ball out of play over the third base dugout. Long Friday night at the Old Ball Orchard. The 0-2 again. Strike three swing and chased the pitch off the plate. He couldn't have hit with a boat paddle. <laughs> Two down, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Lohmeyer. And here comes Chris Anderson, and that's going to be all for the Belmont Abbey lefty. He has already signaled to the bullpen. But, man, what an outing by Lohmeyer in a do-or-die situation. He pitches his team two outs deep into the eighth inning and will exit in a 6-6 ball game. We'll tell you about the new pitcher when we come back in just a moment. Drew Stagora coming out of the bullpen with outs and nobody on for Belmont Abbey. 
6'3", freshman from Lutz, Florida. And we gave you his numbers earlier when he was warming up in the bullpen. This is 30th appearance, all in relief, 6-0, 363-yard run average. Four of their 11 saves, 57 innings, 50 hits, 30 runs, 23 earned, 65 strikeouts, 27 walks, and opponents hitting 231 against him. He has given up seven home runs in those 57 innings. He will face Corey Bibbins with two outs and the base is empty. Lohmeyer will get a no decision. Seven and two thirds innings, 10 hits, six runs earned, two walks, five strikeouts. He hit two batters, 126 pitches, 81 strikes. As Tagura starts Bibbins off with a breaking ball and misses ball one. Both starting pitchers, under the circumstances, acquitted themselves well. Bivens checks. It's two balls and no strikes. But you got to give it up to Lohmeyer with his team facing elimination, hung in as long as he did, and exits in a tie game two outs deep into the eighth inning. 2-0 to Bivens. Fly ball into center field. There is Duhame, and the inning is over. So Stagora gets Bibbins to end the inning. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. 6-6 six, six the score. Bottom of the eighth inning, Michael Rodriguez, his second inning of relief work. Zach Zara stays in the game in left, and a new second baseman, Landon Shaw, replaces Bryce Roddy. And hitting in the eighth position. Rodriguez got the side in order in the seventh. He'll get the cleanup hitter, Garrett Browder, here to begin the eighth. Browder, two for three with an RBI in the game. And he takes a strike on the inside corner. Right-handed batter, then the left-handed batting Tucker, and then Duhame. Also a left-handed batter. Pitches outside, one and one. In the North Greenville top of the ninth inning, they'll have the top of the order. Deerdorf, Monteith, and Fail. Against Drew Stagura. Foul tip. And it's one ball and two strikes. Rodriguez with the pause, his one-two pitch. Fly ball, left field, coming in and toward the line a bit is Zara, one down. So he's retired all four he's faced. Now Connor Tucker, his base hit in the fifth inning is 
why we have a tie game at the moment. Scored Ben Ferguson. He was out trying to stretch it to a double, which ended up being a big play in this game in its own right. He has scored a run as well. He's one for three. And Rodriguez starts him off with a breaking ball for a strike. The 0 1. Just missed inside. 1 and 1. Monteith in center shading him the other way towards left center. Swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Rodriguez pitching and the fastball is low, two and two. Right before that pitch, Vasquez, the shortstop, moved to the right of second base. So they're full shift now with two balls and two strikes to count on the left-handed batting, Connor Tucker. Break even pitch. And it's slapped to Bibbins at short. Actually, the third baseman playing the shortstop area in his short hop throw picked by Lewis, and they are two down. Now Carter Duhame with two down. Hit a three-run homer in the first inning. Since then, he struck out and lined out to Lewis, the first baseman, in foul territory. And he swings and misses at the first pitch. Brody Fowler retired the last four hitters he faced. Swing and a miss. So that's nine in a row that have been set down by North Greenville pitching. And it's no balls and two strikes on Duhame. Rodriguez sets the 0-2 and a fly ball to center field. Monteith coming on, inning is over. Three up and three down again for Rodriguez. We go to the ninth. Super regional action, tied at six. Postseason baseball, folks, you gotta love it. 6-6 six, six in the ninth. Top of the order for North Greenville. Drew Stagora, the freshman, got the final out of the eighth inning, out there to begin the ninth, and his first pitch to Carter Deardorff is high and away a ball. Deardorff, two for four with two runs scored. Breaking ball for a strike. One and one. He has singled, struck out, singled, grounded out to first. 
the 1 1 pitch. Low with the fastball. Two balls and a strike. Deerdorf, Monteith, John Michael Fail. Danny Everett, the home plate umpire, telling the North Greenville dugout to tone it down a little bit. 2 1 pitch. Way high and outside, ball three. You can get away with making noise if you're encouraging your own players. You start, and I don't know that this is what it was, but if you're starting talking to the other players, that's not going to fly. Strike two called, and the count's full at three and two. All important leadoff hitter in the ninth inning of a tie game. Here's the payoff pitch. And it's strike three called a breaking ball on the inside corner. Deerdorf thought it was ball four. Danny Everett did not. And there's one down. You wonder, is the freshman equal to a moment like this? How about dropping a breaking ball on three and two to the leadoff hitter in a tie game in the ninth? Here's Pat Monteith, takes it outside a ball. Two for three, a walk, he scored twice. Seven hits in the first two games of this Super Regional. The 1-0, low, two balls and no strikes. John Michael fail on deck, anybody gets on, Mark Kloop would get a shot. He bounced that one a couple of feet in front of the plate. It goes all the way to the backstop. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Belmont Abbey has the bottom of the order due up. Burr, Velada, and Boyles, seven, eight, and nine. That's ball four. And Monty is a one out base runner. He has stolen 17 bases, been caught five times on the year. John Michael fell one for three with a three run home run. If you're just joining us, the run that this kid has been on Counting this game, his last 22 games, 14 home runs, and 45 RBIs. He homered twice in game one today. Takes a ball down and away, ball one. Hit a walk-off home run last weekend to win a regional game. The 1-0. Strike in there, fastball. One ball and one strike. Monteith at first, one down. Top of the ninth inning, tied at six. The 1-1 one -one to John Michael Fail. And a breaking ball low and outside and a nice backhanded stab by Garrett Browder. Two and one. That's going to get pitching coach Jeff May out of the dugout to talk to his young right-hander. It will be intriguing to see what Landon Powell decides to do going to the bottom of the ninth, and the situation may have something to do with it, but with a lead, if they were able to score here, if he follows his season-long pattern, you would probably see Nate Roof come in to close it down. Would he bring him in in a tie game? Would he run Rodriguez back out there for a third inning? We talked about it during the regional. Michael Rodriguez does have starting experience, so so he could go out there for another inning or two should the game remain tied. 2-1 and Fell swings and he hits it high and deep. 
Right center field. He has done it again. Two home run for John Michael Fell. And it's 8 6 North Greenville. I have seen a lot. I don't know that I have ever seen anybody at any level I've ever broadcasted on a streak like this. 15 home runs and 44 RBIs now in his last 22 games. And he knew it as soon as it left the bat. Here's Mark Kloop. Two for four with two runs batted in, and he swings to the first pitch, and he pops it foul out of here right side. That probably answers the question about who's going to pitch the bottom of the ninth inning. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be Nate Roof. Maybe not, though. There's nobody currently warming up in the bullpen. The 0-1. What time is it in the Czech Republic right now? About 3 a.m.? <laughs> Just finally, finally heard from Vladimir Klup. All he said was, guy is a legend <laughs> about John Michael Fail. One ball, one strike to Vladimir's son, Mark. He pulls it foul. And look at Hunter Dilworth making a play down there at third on a tough in-between hop. Ball, two strikes. And just missed the outside corner. Five RBIs in this game for fail. He had four in game one. So, excuse me, I, I was wrong. It's 15 home runs and 49 runs batted in. I have shorted him some RBIs. Kloop strikes out swinging on a breaking ball down. Two outs. Second strikeout for Stagura. Now David Lewis. <laughs> Vladimir says, by the way, it's 4 a.m in the Czech Republic. First pitch to Lewis is in for a strike. Lewis one for two officially, he's walked and been hit by a pitch. He takes that pitch down and away. Yeah, I see no sign of Nate Roof out there, so I think they're going to stick with Michael Rodriguez. Delmont Abbey hasn't touched him in two innings, so why not? Well, and there is some wisdom to that. There's a ground ball over the mound and into center field for a base hit. I mean, it depends on how you look at things. You've already got one win in your pocket. You're three outs away from closing things down now. If Belmont Abbey were to come back in the bottom of the ninth inning and win the game, you'd still have your closer rested and ready for tomorrow. So, I mean, there are different ways you can look at it. Jalen Vasquez, one for four, an RBI single in the first, and since then he's flied out to shallow left three straight times. I have always subscribed, though, to the Leo DeRocher idea about things, and it's normally reserved for starting pitching. The 0-1, swing and a miss. And that is you never save a pitcher for tomorrow because tomorrow it might rain. But we know it's going to rain tomorrow. That is true.
just a little bit low. 30th pitch for Stagura coming up. 13 of them, 13 of his 29 pitches strikes. Now time called at the plate. Here comes the one, two, and it's fouled off, stays alive. Vasquez battling. Stagura ready again with the one, two pitch. And it's low, two balls and two strikes. Zach Zara in the on-deck circle. 2-2 Two -two pitch, and it's line foul outside of first. Again, the 2-2 two -two to Vasquez, and it's down and in ball three. <laughs> Garrig Octavio homered over in the Czech Republic Pro League today. Payoff pitch, runner goes, and Vasquez swings and he hammers it high and deep. Right field to the wall is Burr and it's gone. Two run homer for Vasquez. It's 10 6 Crusaders. His 11th of the year. Dugout's a little bit happy right now? I think so. Here's Zara. Struck out swinging as a pinch hitter leading off the eighth inning. I think Vasquez knew it as soon as he hit it. Disappears into the night here in Tigerville. Swing and a miss, one and one. See a couple of kids over there from the right field line coming back from it. Think they grabbed it. It's a big time souvenir, man. <laughs> Outside. Two and one. Again in the bottom of the ninth inning. Bottom third of the batting order due up for Belmont Abbey. The two one pitch. Down and in ball three. Nobody throwing in the Belmont Abbey bullpen. It's Drew Stagura against the world. And right now the world is winning. Two two-run home runs in the inning. One by John Michael Fail, the other by Jalen Vasquez, and Zara pulls it foul off the top of the first base dugout, three and two. Outside ball four. Second walk of the inning. And nobody was throwing because they were already loose. We're going to get a pitching change. Chris Anderson on his way out. He's already signaled. So breaking the action, and we'll tell you about the new Belmont Abbey pitcher in a moment.
new pitcher for Belmont Abbey is right-hander Jake Craddock, a 5'9 junior from Lawsonville, North Carolina. You know, I just noticed on the roster that Grant Lohmeyer's from Cincinnati. Huh. Should have asked him Skyline or Gold Star, and there's only one right answer to that question. You got numbers on Mr. Craddock? Yep, Jake Craddock comes in with an 8.56 ERA, two and two for the season. This will be his 26th appearance. Does have one start this season and three saves. 27 and a third innings pitched, 31 hits allowed, 26 earned runs, 22 walks, 31 strikeouts, and opponents are batting 277 against him. I'm guessing you were referring to Chile, right? Skyline, yes. or, yeah. And there's only one right answer, Skyline. Okay. Landon Shaw steps in, batting for the first time. He came on defensively in the bottom of the eighth. 300 on the season in limited action. He's made five starts. Has a home run, three RBIs. Takes it down and in from Jake Craddock. Breaking ball, and he just kind of piece of it. Cue shot off the end of the bat over to the first base dugout. One and one. Chopper to the right side. Taylor backs up a couple of steps on the outfield turf, and the second baseman throws him out. Inning is over, but, and a big but, four runs on a pair of two-run home runs. No errors, and a runner left. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning, North Greenville. Three outs away from returning to the College World Series for the second straight year, leading it 10 to six. Well, Michael Rodriguez going back out now with a chance to nail down a super regional victory and a trip to the College World Series for the second straight year for North Greenville. He's got to get three outs, and he'll go through the bottom third of the Belmont Abbey batting order, Caleb Bird, Todd Vallada, and Jack Boyles. Burr one for three. Rodriguez has retired all six since coming on, and the first pitch to Burr is in there for a strike. Right-handed batter. And just missed the outside corner with that one, one and one. Rodriguez, 1-1 one, one pitch, way high and outside, two balls and a strike. Neither starter will get a decision. 
both pitch their teams deep into the game. Fowler went six complete. There's a strike on the outside corner, two and two. The freshman for North Greenville and the senior, Grant Lohmeyer, seven and two thirds innings to give his team a chance, but Drew Stagura gave up two two run home runs in the top of the ninth inning. And that's where we are now at 10 to six. Three and two the count on Caleb Burr. Rodriguez will take a walk back behind the mound and collect himself. And it was a completely different story from what we thought we were gonna see in the first inning. Seven runs between the two teams. We thought that both starters were gonna get the short leash, yep. but that proved not to be the case. Well, in Lohmeyer, you remember, it was three nothing, bases were loaded, one out, and there was action in the Belmont Abbey bullpen. Now timeout called as the umpires want to get together and talk about something. I think they're not, sh maybe not sure about the count. Well, they're talking just up the third baseline a bit. And yeah, scoreboard and the live statistics both have a 3-2 count. Not sure. Whatever the discussion was, it's over. And Burr stepping back in, three balls and two strikes. Rodriguez with the payoff, and he walked him. Missed badly outside, ball four. First base runner allowed by Rodriguez. And now Todd Velada, who is 0 for 3. Fly ball to center, pop to short, ground out to short. Swing and a miss. He wanted two of those runs back right there. Yes, he did. And the guy who's hit three home runs all season long. Swinging him, uh, uh, takes a strike. No balls and two strikes. Jack Boyles, the freshman shortstop and number nine hitter on deck. Rodriguez with the 0-2. Tried the backdoor breaking ball and it stayed just outside. Yeah, good eye there. John Michael fails set up a little bit out of the plate. Michael Rodriguez hit his target, but it was a ball. Here comes the 1-2. Breaking ball in on his fist and he fouled it off. A little bit surprised with the lead that Lewis is holding the runner on. Again, the one two from Rodriguez to Vallad. And it's high, two and two. Break even pitch. Strike three called. Morata gave up on the breaking ball and it came back over the outside corner and he knew it. One down. Third strikeout for Rodriguez. Crusaders, North Greenville's version of them. Two outs away. Now Boyles. Homered in the second. Since then, he has struck out looking and flied to right. Takes it outside a ball. Leadoff hitter Connor Powell waiting deck. Lefty with the set and the 1-0 pitch. Pops it up right side. Lewis in foul territory called off by 
Landon Shaw, who actually made the catch back in fair territory. And there are two down. And here is Connor Powell. The only thing standing between North Greenville and a return trip to the College World Series and a chance to defend its title in Cary, North Carolina. Powell two for four. And the first pitch to him is a breaking ball, strike one. Rodriguez with the pause and his 0-1 pitch. And it's lined over short out into left field for a base hit, knocked down out there by Zara. And it's not over yet. Third hit of the game for Connor Powell. He had three hits in game one too. Here is Patrick Taylor. 0 for 5 in game one, 0 for 4 so far in game two. And this is a big hitter because the tying run is on deck now and there's a break ball strike one. Ben Ferguson, if he gets to the plate, would represent the tying run for Belmont Abbey. The 0 1 pitch and a chopper over the mound. Here comes Vasquez, backhand throws, and a tag, no, safe. Ball is out, Lewis is hurt. A run is gonna score. The runner is hurt as well. Big time collision, and Lewis is absolutely writhing in pain. And that's one of those plays where the throw to the inside, the home plate side, the runner coming, and the collision, and you just worry about his wrist. Infield single for Taylor. And now it is deathly quiet here as both Lewis, the first baseman, and Taylor, the runner, are down. The collision jarred the ball free, allowing Caleb Burr to come all the way around to score to make it 10 to 7. And both players are still down. Landon Powell was out talking to the umpires. And I wonder, in the midst of all of this, if he is going to challenge the runner, Patrick Taylor, being out of that baseline that you have to run in going up to first. <laughs> Lewis is up. And so is Patrick Taylor. Vasquez's running throw, you know what? If they challenge that, I think they've got a chance to win that because he was in fair territory Two or three steps before the bag. The question now is going to be the health of both players. Looks like Lewis is going to stay in the game, which in and of itself is remarkable. And so is Taylor. So thankfully, both players are okay. Wondering if we... If we have a video or a angle of, oh, he's arguing that <laughs> he's arguing that the that the runner never touched the base. That's what it sounded like. Uh, maybe so that. Well, they're, they're challenging something, yeah. so they're going to go uh, underneath and look at this. That's what it sounded like. He said right before the right before Crazy Train started up. Well. 
and I, I, I would imagine you have to tell them what you want to challenge. So if they go in there looking for one thing, they can't find something else. But I'm telling you, had they challenged him being out of the runner's lane, I think they got a good shot of winning that challenge. And it was talked about yesterday in the in the meeting between administrators and the umpires did make it clear that when a play is challenged, they do challenge or they do review the entire play. So it is possible that if they do see something else on the play, okay, it could make it it could have an impact. Okay, so that that is that's a good uh, a good explanation because I was not aware that I thought yes. they had to look at the one thing they went in there to look. Yeah, the the crew chief, look at. the crew chief so I believe it's Gary, it's either Gary Keller or Danny Everett, it, the name escapes me, but he made it clear to both coaches that when you review a play, everything is looked at. There was a challenge uh, during the regional where there was a play at third as well as a play at second. North Greenville was going for a double play, and they looked at both plays. At both, uh, it was Corey Bivens trying to make the tag at third, and then he threw over to second. So not only did they review the tag, which he had the ball in his hand and not in the glove when the tag was made, so that was that call was safe. And then they also looked at the play at second, which he turned out to be safe too. So yeah, this is uh, this is. I mean, obviously it's huge. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you, the tying run to the plate now, and a guy who's got 12 home runs on the season, including one in game one today. I think that umpires are going to take their time looking at this one. And it looks like they're calling, are they calling a third umpire in or not? No, I thought they were, but he is turning and heading back. So Rodriguez will stay loose. If the play stands, it'll be an infield hit, runners on the corners. Taylor at the moment credited with an infield single and an RBI. Burr scoring all the way from second base on the play. And again, both players were lying injured and the ball rolling away. Right. Yeah, I mean, right now, right now it was scored a single and then, it, and then Powell advancing to second and then Burr advancing to third. But then the ball getting away allowed Burr to score and Powell to advance to third. So there was an error on the play, but it was also a single. If if the play is upheld. So who is the error on who? It would be on on the throw. So that would be uh, Vasquez, right? Yeah, Vasquez from shortstop. Because the ball got away. But I would argue then if it's an th error on the throw on the shortstop, then it can't be a base hit. And the only reason the ball got away was because of the collision. Well, it, if it's a close play, though, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Here come the umpires, so let's see. They point to first, and he's safe. So the play will stand regardless and Ben Ferguson will come to the plate representing the tying run. So the error on Vasquez, right? That allows the run to score? For now, we'll have to, might be something that has to be reviewed after the fact. Ferguson is two out of four. He struck out against Rodriguez back in the seventh inning. I think the throw kind of We'll talk about more about it in a moment. Ground ball to the left side. Bivens will take it himself to the bag. And North Greenville advances to the College World Series for the second straight year. The Crusaders will have a chance to defend their national championship. 10-7 the final. And the celebration is on here in Tigerville. Belmont Abbey did not go quietly, but Michael Rodriguez able to get it done. And Corey Bivens, you will very rarely see a five unassisted play at second base. 
but in the shift, that's what you get. And North Greenville will go back to carry and try and defend its national championship. 10-7 the final. And Allen, they're getting used to this kind of thing around here, aren't they? Oh yeah. In the inning, one run, two hits, an error, and two runners left. So your final numbers, North Greenville, 10 runs, 13 hits, two errors, they stranded eight. And Belmont Abbey, seven runs, 12 hits, no errors, they left five. Rodriguez the winner, 5-0. and oh. Stagor the loser, 6-1, and one, no save. And the game took two hours and 55 minutes to play. It's been a long season. And for Belmont Abbey, it comes to an end with 41 wins, which ties a school record. And for North Greenville, they improved to 49 and nine. They are hoisting Jalen Vasquez is the regional champion trophy toward the crowd. And they advance to the College World Series in Cary, North Carolina. June 3rd through the 10th. Here's another look at the final out. Actually a look at the celebration pouring out of the dugout. Well, that is going to do it. From Tigerville, the North Greenville Crusaders sweep two games in this Southeast Super, Super Regional for NCAA Division II, 16 to eight in game one and 10-7 in game two. And this will wrap up my college baseball for the year, my third year of getting to call more than a handful of North Greenville baseball games. I truly appreciate Landon Powell for roping me in and Allen and all the work that the guys do here on the production. And wish, wish the Crusaders nothing but the best of luck as they had to carry and for Belmont Abbey, a fine season that comes to an end here in Tigerville tonight. Final score again, 10 to seven. You got anything to say before we wrap it up? No, it's a great regional and Obviously, after the first game, Belmont Abbey could have just kind of laid down and just said, oh, well, well, we'll get them next year. But they didn't do that. They put up a heck of a fight, almost came back and forced the game three. But North Greenville was just not going to be denied. Belmont Abbey, North Greenville, Belmont Abbey, and Mount Olive are three teams that are going to be competing for this conference for years to come, in my opinion. So it's, it's going to be some exciting baseball uh, just among the conference, much, you know, much less you know, just on a national level. So it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be the next couple years especially are going to be a lot of fun. I would concur. Well, that will do it from Tigerville. Final score again in game two. North Greenville 10, Belmont Abbey 7. North Greenville wins the Division II Southeast Super Regional and advances to the College World Series in Cary June 3rd through the 10th. For Alan Cahaley and everyone on the production staff here in Tigerville, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody. <laughs>